Hello fellow gamers, I'm Mark Z and today I'm here to give you my guide on the most optimal way to play Teamfight Tactics. It's TFT with Mark Z. At its core, this game is about resource management. Your resources being health, gold, your board, and your bench. Depending on the meta, different resources will be more valuable. In a fast paced meta, you want to focus on keeping your health pool high, whereas in a slower meta, you want to focus on getting to 50 gold as efficiently as possible. Even in a certain meta, lobbies play differently, so make sure you're matching the pace of the game. Think of this game kind of like poker. Every game, you've got to play the cards that you're dealt, so never blame the RNG. Learn to adapt to your hand and the hands of the people you're playing against. Diversify your comps, play styles, and never be afraid to experiment. That said, picking one strong meta comp and learning to play that comp in all its variations is also a viable way to learn the game. Think of it kind of like maining a champ in League. The most important part of the game is managing your economy. What I mean by this is getting to 50 gold while also not being dead. Getting to 50 gold will provide you with the most passive income you can get, which you should use then to level up. Very early in the game, two star units are often more valuable than comp synergies, so you'll want to grab any pairs that you see and hold them in case you can hit an upgrade to survive the early game. In this example, I focus far too hard on getting to 20 gold and get rid of my pairs and some units on the board, fighting with only 3 out of 4 to lose streak and stay above 20 gold for maximum economy. Because I focus so hard on economy, not only am I lose streaking, but all my opponents are basically beating me with all of their units left alive, meaning I'm taking maximum damage per round. Because I've sold so much of my bench, I rarely have any upgrades to complete. I'm so weak that I can't even beat Krugs, so while I have 40 gold, it's definitely not worth it. In this game, I try to focus on leveling up much more aggressively to get extra units in. Here, putting in another Rek'Sai, even though it doesn't grant me an extra synergy, it's still a lot of extra health and frontline on the board for my team. On your way to a 50 gold economy, there are plenty of times where it is the right decision to spend some gold to level up, to get more power onto the board, or to hold a critical unit so it's easier to complete your comp later. While this may slow your progress, it will be worth it. If you find yourself down around 20 HP, that is usually the time to go all in and spend all of your gold to get the necessary levels or upgrades for your comp. You never want to die with unspent gold. At 11 health, I can't afford to take another loss. Picking up the brand allows me to go into Elementalist, which is a very good generic comp that fits into a lot of other comps. It allows me to keep my demon buff, summon a golem, helps with my frontline, and brings a lot of magic damage to my comp. Items are super powerful and can make any unit in the game a hyper carry provided you build them correctly. That said, there are still optimal decisions. In early carousel rounds, items are always more important than units. You can always spend gold that you get over the course of the game re-rolling to find units, but you can't spend money for items. Late game, grabbing important 4 or 5 cost units to complete your comp or find upgrades is occasionally better than items. Different units want different items. Figuring out how to best synergize your comp with your items is critical. Draven's the main damage threat of my comp, and as tempting as it is to put a ton of damage items on here, it's actually more valuable to put defense items on him to make sure that he lives long enough to put his damage out. PD will help against assassins and auto attackers, the Dragon's Claw will help against any magic damage threats, and the RFC gives him much needed attack speed and range so he doesn't need to move to actually start hitting targets. Late game, you should also try and figure out which items will help you the most versus your few remaining opponents, so make sure to scout around. In the early to mid game, you want to generically position with an established frontline and backline with no units behind your backline for assassins to leap to. This is pretty straightforward early, but late game positioning becomes the single most important factor often in winning or losing games. Remember to keep your eye out for pesky blitzcranks as well. If someone is running it, don't be afraid to put a weaker unit further in the back than your actually strong backline unit. In this example, Nidalee is my primary damage dealer, so I put a Rek'Sai behind her. This makes sure that the Rek'Sai is the one who gets hit by Blitzcrank hooks and assassins at the start of rounds. 
In the late game, comps like Glacial Demon and Gunslinger want to be on the near side or same side of their opponent's board to start proccing their passive on hit effects. Longer range comps want to stay far away on the opposite side of their opponent's board to use their range advantage, like Rangers. Scout your opponents to see where they are set up and to counter that in the late game. Against area of effect compositions, you can try breaking into two separate groups or into horizontal lines to make sure less units get hit. If you lost a round to opponent late, try mixing up your positioning. In this example, I want my demons to try and burn his powerful frontline units first. He also knows this and does a good job moving his Cho'Gath away from where I just put my demons. There are no hard and fast rules in TFT. For every piece of advice you've heard in this video, there are times where it is wrong and you should do something else. Thanks for checking out my Teamfight Tactics Guide. I know I'm on the LCS desk for now, but wait until they release an eSport of this thing and I'll fulfill my lifelong dream of becoming a Teamfight Tactics Pro. Until then, leave any questions in the comments or hit me up on Twitter at TheMarkZ. See you guys out there.